Hello everybody. Welcome to my dirty phone. My uh, vlogging camera has kind of died. So we are on the phone. It's a very good phone, so it should be fine. But, uh, yeah, I thought I'd take you with you for my day today. It was quite a busy one, <laughs> as always. First job of the day is we are going with, what are we doing? We are going, I need my something to prop this up with. Oh no. Oh no, the washing machine. Oh, devastating. The washing machine, the power got turned off repeatedly yesterday because they were fixing the electricity here. And it's got stuck sharp. So we've got a different girth to use, which is a bit of annoyance, bothering a training with these girth. But uh, it is what it is, basically, at the end of the day. And the girth will fit, and it is a very good girth, which is not the girth I normally use. So anyway, yeah, so we are going to uh, Arena High. I know I do this a lot at the moment, sorry, but I'm taking a different horse. Does that help you be in interested? And I'm actually going to take you on my whole day today. Um, we're going to be riding and doing various things. So first job is just taking these, we're taking Boots and Zora over to Amanda's just to work them because it's nice to take them elsewhere. Um, if you follow this, me, for a while you will know that uh, Zora has actually just been rehabbing for a long period of time she broke her splint bone in the field she didn't break it she got kicked it's actually um, Belle the other horse that you've been watching on here kicked her not great obviously and it's really annoying because I would love my mares all to live together because I now own Belle but it just isn't I just can't trust her yet maybe one day I will but for the time being, she just goes out next to next to the others rather than with them. And she's very happy. I'm fine with that. So, yeah. So anyway, she's been rehabbing from that. And it's been a bloody long journey. We went to the vets last week. Last week? Yeah. Went to the vets last week and she had her hind fetlocks medicated because she's had previously had surgery there she's had a right rough deal this horse i tell you i really feel for her because she's just not had an easy time with it at all you're not coming with us dogs no you just do whatever they want honestly but now we're getting back doing things she's had her time with her medication so now yeah we're gonna get back out do some do some stuff work her she will go back to the vets in a month's time, three more weeks, just to have a check in that what it was meant to have done has worked. Because with things like that, it's kind of, it's not just necessarily going to just mend it, basically. Uh, and so, but yeah, we need to do some work in the meantime. So that is what we are doing today. So I'm really looking forward to it. Nice to have her out. Haven't had her out in, I don't know how long, God knows. Uh, Meg is taking Boots, who, annoyingly, we both share a saddle now, which is a bit of a pain, for these reasons. It's a bit windy today. I feel like it was a bit windy last time we went to this arena hire. It was a lovely day yesterday. Anyway, is what it is. So we're going to load up, get going. That is first job of the day. See, no wonder these videos end up so long, because I've been talking for like five minutes about the fact that I'm just going to take my to arena hire. Should just do it, shouldn't I? Shaff about it. Right, rope halter in. Zora has had a couple of those. Help her out with this first experience of leaving the yard again, other than to the vets. Take you guys, these guys, and then bring come back and take you again. You, but I don't think you'd like it. Here he is Bootsy with a bit of a poop stain on him.
we're all loaded, ready to go. So uh, my goals for today with Block with Zora are to just be relaxed. That's top of the list. Um, so hopefully she is feeling like she can do that. And Carmen Cookies have assisted her as well. Um, so it's a lot for them going back out and doing things. You know, there's kind of expectation of what's happened previously and obviously before we've done exciting things and jumped and all the rest of it. But yeah, for her, I just want everything to be very calm, very relaxed, be able to work her properly. And that's the crux of it. Nothing much more complicated than that. So what I first did when we arrived is I went through some groundwork. This is part of my warm up. You can see I take that nice turning hind leg pattern. What that encourages Zora to do is be soft through her rib cage. Remember about being focused on her own body and being relaxed in the space. And then from there we can go and do a little bit of just walking. So we're just kind of doing that. arena acclimatization. Yeah, I don't have any gloves either. So she gets the opportunity without a human being on her back. With my support from the ground, she gets the opportunity to feel soft and good and explore her surroundings gives me a chance to ground myself and be aware of myself as well if you'd be interested in learning more about the groundwork that i practice and how i train my horses in general you can find out all about it in the description below where there is a link to my online training platform i was really pleased with how zora brought Maybe herself to the session she felt very focused very calm it was good having boots there as a kind of support for her but in general she actually like showed up in a really good way she can be quite high energy so for me having her in this soft place and having the groundwork to practice just to remind her and check in with that positive feeling that she knows so well was really really positive and set us up for a really good session so after we did some groundwork I could pop her bridle on and then we had a little ride and you know I think she hasn't been out since February um just before she had her injury she was actually going out and you know she was kind of ready to go to a show so it was really gutting when she got injured but it was just I don't know I've worked so hard on the rehab with her over the last six months and to have her feeling so consistent and strong really gave me reassurance that the rehab that I have been doing has been everything it needed to be she was looking a little bit out of the arena at that point, so I was just focusing on having that right bend. Zora has literally the most enormous trot, and kind of, I'm at this point where I'm having to, like, bring the energy down, actually. I want her to be less powerful, less kind of punchy and athletic. I want her to be a bit more boring, <laughs> because the punchy athletic trot tends to bring about a little bit of tension, so I'm really trying hard to bring her back this time in a super soft way uh I was aware of it before but I think I'm just more and more aware of it now there were some poles up in the arena actually so we got to do some pole work which was nice but with the rehab that we've been doing I've been really focusing on Zora being long and strong in her body so you'll have seen on my Instagram if you follow me over there at Mary Hackett if you don't that I have been doing a lot of like slow long low rehab where she is soft in her posture and for me you can see now in her neck when we're working here that she has really got a much stronger top line because of it um we've got a different saddle that we're riding in as i said this is actually the saddle that boots has been being ridden in they're both actually a very similar shape through their backs but it's uh, Jeffrey's one, which is similar to the Harry Dabs. They come out of the same factory, but they are really, it's really designed for a horse of her shape. And it felt lovely. It didn't move. It was really supporting. And the spinal clearance on these saddles is absolutely amazing. Like they, I can't tell you. And they have so many different trees and so many different options that it is kind of unlikely that they wouldn't have something to suit any type of horse, essentially. Um, so we broke it down and just started doing some walking over the poles. I really wanted to give her the opportunity to stretch down. And as you can see here, she can sustain a really good posture through the poles now. Previously, I think when we used to go over poles, she would have a bit of a tension and a bit of a holding. Whereas you can see here, the softness is really consistent. And 
you know, sometimes we'll do a load of poles all at once, but if they're not actually working their body in the right way over the poles, you probably shouldn't be doing it. And for a little while, when we first were doing her rehab and she walked over poles, she was bracing and holding in the base of her neck, whereas now you can see that she is softer and more able to stretch down over the poles. You see there when she slightly loses her balance, her tendency now is to take her nose down rather than up, and that is what I wanted. We didn't do loads and loads at all, I think, actually, after this. This was all the pole work that we did. And then I just went and had a little canter both ways, not asking too much of her, just balancing her body and keeping her really soft. Oh, I might be wrong. I think we might be about to do some more poles. <laughs> but all the time, just bearing in mind how little she's done in terms of ridden stuff. We've been hacking, and but my arena at home is smaller, and so I've wanted to stay away from re rehabbing her in it because I tended to find it made it kind of gave me bad habits, and I wanted to be able to go more in a straight line, hence why we are out at the Equitex Arena. So you can see there, she's really stretching, using her body, and that was all I did with pole work, that was what it was. And now I'm doing a little bit of canter work, because again, very hard with the ground through the summer, been not consistent being able to do some canter work. So I was just in my light seat, just trying to keep my shoulders above my hips, not get too over her shoulders and just supporting her keeping her soft but allowing her to find her stride and just move her back and her body she felt super in the canter actually I was really impressed with how well she held it um when we took her to the vets last week they lunged them in canter and although she struggled initially when they asked her for canter she kind of got going and then I was like okay right like Sometimes I think I can get a bit stuck in like building things up in a really perfect way and actually the art of actually just doing it is really, really important. So anyway, I had a canter both ways and interestingly canter right didn't feel as good as canter left. So her left hind leg is her weaker hind leg. Now, according to the vets, there isn't physical like lameness as such but it is less strong so it's then no surprise that when it's on the outside of her body it she finds it slightly harder so her tendency on this rein is to actually bring her quarters to the inside so you'll see I just put my inside leg back there just to push her quarters a little bit straight and then I just get a little bit of resistance into the hand because anything you feel in the hand is generally uh conclusion of what they feel in their hind leg so when I'm saying to her don't just compensate and bring your right side in take the weight over onto the hind leg on the left side she's like oh that's a little bit hard so it's all just an awareness thing and just bringing that awareness and asking her slightly differently um I, I get very hung up on horses having asymmetries but when you ride in a bigger arena like this it's so much harder and better for me and for them because I can really it, it doesn't feel so dramatic whereas when I ride in my arena at home and it's very small I notice that things feel much much worse whereas here you know you can hardly see that she's bringing her quarters through to the inside but it's a small thing that I noticed rather than a very big thing. That was a bit of a ramble, wasn't it? Hard. It's the first time she's cantered, isn't it? Without, with a rider on. Mm -hmm. Since February. Hard. Was it hard? I think you'll work quite hard. Yeah. You're so special. Right, boots his turn. Saddle hasn't moved. No. Miracle. Literally. She's foamy. She's actually foamy. Bloody love Equitex. And maybe this girth would be a good girth to have. So I've had like endless problems with Zora's saddle. This is a Jeffries, so it's from the same company as Harry Dabbs. They work on a very similar kind of setup. The Meg's beautiful stirrups. This is actually Boots' saddle, which is why Meg isn't riding currently. Um, and then I borrowed this girth. It's a Lemure girth, but you can see that it's like shaped around her armpit. And her saddle hasn't moved. And we previously had only trouble with her saddle moving so fingers crossed and obviously with the help of the wonderful Equitex it's uh, all stuck in one place you need a bath you look sweaty he, my best girl sweaty 
I'm going to give you a bath. What do the goodest girls get? Carrots. Yeah. You have a bite here. Yeah. You want a bit? Oh, precious. That nice. It's like Lady in the Tramp. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Oh. I am so pleased with Zora. Like, my goal was for her to be relaxed and she felt very, very relaxed. She felt very happy to be here. She did some really nice work. And that's all I can ask, right? I mean, I haven't counted her since February. It is October. That is a long, long gap. And I mean, we've obviously been doing some work from the ground and all the rest of it, but to come here, do that, feel that good. I'm very happy, very, very happy. I'm going to give Meg some help. I'm going to give Zora a wash because I'm going to clip her because she's a hot mess. Um, and then we're going to head back home and ride everyone else. Yeah. Look at him. Oh, precious boy. Zora says, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me a sec. Do we have a groom? Why are you like this, Zora? Don't eat his mane. We like his mane. So you put shampoo in there and it sprays. It's like a car wash. Yes, you hate me. You hate me a little bit, but you'll be so beautiful when you're all clean and you've had a shower. The water is cold, everyone. I am a horrible person. It's very warm in the UK at the moment, actually. It's like 20 degrees. <laughs> He's okay. He's just in the school doing his thing. So you spray it on like this, and then you get a brush, and you give them a scrub, like this. One of these, this is a magic brush, they're fantastic. But you didn't think you were coming here for a bathing tutorial, did you? We made it back to the yard, have unloaded, and now we are continuing to ride more horses. Uh, so next up, I am gonna be doing Blondie, and Meg is going to be doing some long lining. I talk like that when my brain is processing something. <laughs> Makes me go slow. So yeah, I will, yeah, hopefully Blondie is keen on being ridden today. Who knows? Every day is an unknown with her. I actually clipped her yesterday and she was amazing. And I even clipped most of her legs. I didn't get finished 100%, so she might look a bit patchy. So please don't judge me if she does. But yeah, I'm really, um, she was just amazing. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen I did a post about it. But yeah, she um, hopefully is feeling better because she got very hairy very quickly. So I might actually be able to finish doing her clip today. She's got like a patch under her chin and a bit on her legs and a bit behind her ears. Not because she didn't want me to do it, but because I ran out of time, because I had to go and teach. So I was really pleased with Blondie on this day. She felt very willing and forward and good in her body. So because of her PSSM, we have to do a lot of warming her up. Her body physically needs time to warm up. And sometimes I think I'm too quick to get going. But actually, she felt lovely in this bit on this day. This is a new bit that I'm riding her in. It's the comfy barrel from Expert Bits with a egg but snaffle she always gets a little bit stuck at the gate um i think it's just old habit in a lot of ways but also making sure that i keep my focus up and away from the gate obviously at the moment you know the connection is 
basically non-existent and I'm just very mindful that I think back to the scale of training so rhythm first then bending and then from there we can have connection we can have all of the rest of things that we need but at the, for the time being just having inside bend just having forward connection is my go-to she's always a little like difficult basically she's not an easy horse to ride at all and actually on this day I was really really pleased because I said I asked her to go she said yes she wasn't saying no she wasn't sort of stopping which can be what she does she just parks and she says I'm not really interested and I was actually felt like I was able to actually like ride her on this day what I'm annoyed at myself with is that I didn't feel when she was tired and that is something that I need to be better at she gets tired quickly she's not very fit she finds work ironically needs it but finds it hard at the same time and on this rain I was feeling like she was finding the push very difficult from her left hind leg so here I'm having to kind of encourage her and I just wish at that moment I had just walked rested given her some time because I'm it's like I forget who I'm riding sometimes when I'm riding her and I'm not unkind to her but at the same time I'm kind of expectant of her just to be like Zora or like Belle um, and it's, it's tricky. So yeah, she did get a little bit, I don't know if it, it, we had it on video, but she needed a rest and I didn't give it to her. And I'm annoyed at myself for that. And I will always be self-deprecating in that way. But it was always very, it came back to being very positive. So even when she said to me, oh, I feel a little bit tired, she was able to come more forward. And this felt like a really good day this day. She was pleased, she had ears forward, she was soft and happy and I had my leg on and I was working really with her. So although I didn't quite hear her when she was a bit tired, it still didn't mean that we had a negative ride. It still meant that we had some really positive times. And I liked this bit. She felt like she wanted it a little more in her mouth, like it was a bit softer and she could be a little bit rounder. So I will keep riding riding in it and seeing how we get on. So yeah, that was my little ride with Blondie. I actually didn't do much more than what I've got videoed. Good girl. Was that hard? I just um, I just went and asked her to do a bit more and she was like, no, I really am done now. I'm quite tired and she's been really puffing. So I think actually she's much more unfit than I think she is. So uh, yeah, we'll just build it up slowly, I think. We're very pleased with her. I was saying to Meg, it's funny, like, sometimes I just feel that she's going to be okay and she generally is when I feel like that sometimes I feel like oh this is you know I can feel a resistance or a kind of hesitance and even though she was quite spooky today because it's windy and she's always spooky because of her PSSM she was actually very good and this is a different bit so this is an expert bit comfy barrel and interest yeah it was interesting i think i felt like she was maybe a little bit softer in it i don't know it's hard to know she does move her mouth quite a lot and i think it's because she has this general tightness so anyway either way happy with my girl the girl's going to bring uh, lucy or beth is going to bring Dee, Dee down so i'm going to do her meg is doing a, a great job doing some long lining teaching cookie a bit about like reaching into the connection we use the long lining a lot for that so yeah that's that's the update so far so this is Dee, Dee my four-year-old she's been having a summer holiday and this is her first time being ridden since that holiday so I just have a little pre-flight check with my groundwork like I was doing the same as I was doing with Zora I don't have very much of it videoed with Blunt with Dee, Dee because I'm trying not to end up with a three hour long video but as you can see she was so soft in her body she was really like relaxed and happy and confident and so that was a great starting point for me I just didn't I didn't do very much I just moved her both ways oh, and then like I popped her bridle on I'm actually riding her in the same bit that I was riding Blondie in I think I might need to buy a second one expert bits if you're watching this <laughs> and then it was time to get on
She reminds me a lot of my mum's thoroughbred. Oh really? Yeah. Like the more she's filling out and like her face markings and things like that. Oh really? Yeah. Was he nice? He was so lovely. Like just the nicest granddad human ever. So next up it was Little Belle and Chip. So Meg was doing some uh, groundwork with Chip and I just had a little ride on Belle. Meg does work the other horses in the arena, by the way, while I am doing what I'm doing, but it's hard. I don't have a videographer. I don't have somebody that follows me around all the time. So we do what we do. I do little bits. You see little clips of their training and then Meg does her work with the other horses and it works really well like that. Um, so at the moment with Belle, I struggle a lot at home with her focus. She tends to kind of lose her attention span out to the field. Um, so you'll see me doing some kind of random out of rhythm rising. This was what uh, Claire, my coach, showed me to do the last time I had some training. So when I lose her focus, instead of using my reins maybe, which would probably would have previously been my go-to, I just change my rising. So I go like rising, rising, like standing up for a few strides, sitting down for a few strides to really bring her focus back. And it's been amazing. So like here, instead of using my reins, oh, no didn't do it there did I did I do it here yeah there you see I just go kind of a bit out of rhythm and then she comes back to me so that whole way down that long side I should have done it a lot quicker actually that whole way down that long side instead of pulling on my reins or moving my hands I just change my rhythm I need to shorten my reins here I hope I do in a moment because I need to carry my hands a little more forwards but yeah there we go but um it's really interesting and she has such a light mouth like it's really really sensitive so I'm riding her in a slightly thicker bit that just sits like on her tongue it's got a bendy part in it that goes over her tongue because I think she has quite a fat tongue and what I'm trying to do is just keep her focus on herself but without having to stop or change or use my reins and she's really weak through her top line and through her hind end at the moment she got locking stifle. So I'm just trying to be consistent, keep my hand out in front of me and encourage her to find focus on her own body. Something slightly questioning me in her left side of her mouth. She tends to kind of pull her lip back a little bit there. Now that could be because the right stifle is weaker than the left so that it that it's that like diagonal pair you see she kind of goes below the bridle chomps a little bit but it's all just a work in progress and I'm so mindful that what I'm not doing is you know putting a training aid on her or making her do something I'm just very light very careful there she lost her focus and I thought okay actually she needs a rest so I was proud of myself for that and then I went and did some of the canter work and it's hard in my arena and I talk about this a lot but it is small my arena and so with a little horse like Belle, I can get away with it. She's only 15 too. But, you know, it's hard schooling someone like Blondie in this arena. I'm looking forward to taking Blondie out soon, actually. We've been working hard on the loading. So hopefully we can get out and get out to do some, go to some bigger arenas and do some fun stuff. But it is what it is at the moment. But with Belle, I'm just, you know, going in my light seat, keeping her nice and forward, not doing loads and loads. Again, being soft in the hand little flying change she's getting better at those so it's kind of a work in progress and I'm really proud of where she's coming to but it, as you can see it is still quite inconsistent sometimes she's kind of disconnects reconnects finds it hard can't stay round but what I'm not doing is like making her be round all I'm doing is keeping her forward and then connecting in the bend and that is all I can do at the moment what I'm not going to be doing is fixing my hands fixing the contact and 
making her, in inverted commas, stay on the bit because all that would do would breed compensation. So I, uh, I'm going to go from 15 to, to um, <laughs> Gigantosaurus, you're a good boy. This is four year old Chip, he's a bit bigger than Belle. Now, I know you guys don't know Chip, but I thought this would be an interesting insight. So he's four and his owner did actually back him herself. And I've just been kind of doing a bit more. As you can see, he's gigantic. And this is his first ever canter under saddle. Now, often they just do a little bit. They kind of even don't even get that far. They offer like a stride or so. So for me, when he offered in such a generous way, I was like, wow, okay, this is cool. And you can see I don't have a transition as such. I just ask for more trot, ask for more trot until I find the canter. And actually for a four-year-old, this is quite balanced. This is more further ahead than I would have expected him to be due to his size and that kind of thing. But... I was really, really pleased with him. As you can see, I'm not riding him in a connection. I'm not asking him to be on the bit. We are, get, again, seems a bit of a theme, forward bending, forward bending. And then the connection will come naturally after that. This was, it is hard work riding big four-year-olds like this. He requires a lot offered canter again there was really really pleased with that so that's more normal that you get that response to start with that you ask for more trot and they half break to canter but as you can see in a moment he does then actually canter again properly and I was just very very proud of him you know this is big and new for him and he was really trying I'm going about to demonstrate what it feels like you want to do with your <laughs> arms obviously my moving of my arms doesn't affect his mouth in that moment but yeah I'm explaining about trying to get the back legs to do the pushing what a good boy I was very very pleased with him on that day I was hot as well I had too much clothing on that is for sure I am shredding I am shredding four-year-olds are hard just I just think you'd have to just a lot do a lot for them and like at the end when I was cantering and I was doing that with my arms, that's what it feels like. That is what it feels like you need. Oh, I need that bit. We've got two left. I've got one. Meg's got one to long line. And then we are done. And then I've got to go and teach. Oh, I need to take my jumper off. That would help, I think. So I'm just changing some bits. That's the bit I rode Belle in. It's weird, isn't it? It's called a Beris bit. So it's got quite a small ring and then it's got this funny port and then it sits, it like sits in their mouth like that. So like it's a bit like forward. Really encourage her to take her mouth, her nose out and forward. I was very proud of her today, actually. She felt really great. Um, and then this is the bit that I ride a lot of them in at the moment. So I have more than one of it. So this is the Expert Bits Comfy Barrel. And you see it's got like, it fully moves like this, but then it's got, it's an Egbert, so it's quite stationary. So that's the one I was riding Chip in. That's the one I'm about to ride Raven in. It's the one she really likes. I have it with full cheeks, which is really good when you're getting started. So like Cookie, the pony Meg was long lining earlier. She has that. This is the bit I also rode Blondie in actually. My bit tastes have changed recently. I really like that bit. I like this bit. It's nice, it's got a bit of bit of bend, but not loads. I like the bendy windering one, this one. <laughs> this one. This is Zora's bit. Woo! Super bendy, we like that one. That one's nice if you've got a horse that's really like, really light in the rain. And then this is similar to the one I just showed you, but this is the Horsemanship Saddlery Lip Relief. So it's slightly different because it's got more movement, but it still won't bend past that point, which I like. 
um, so it means it kind of can't pinch basically which is a lot of the, what these bits can't do is they're not acting on the horse's tongue in a negative way because it's a sensitive bit of flesh sounds obvious right anyway right I've got one more to ride come on Miriam got this and here we are everyone where you must pay attention while you're putting your bridle together would you like to wear it backwards Raven she's like oh these people are so stupid okay you can swap it around now thanks <laughs> Bit attack, yeah, and no, I need boots too. Bit attached the right way round, and we're off. Here we go. Raven has been here for quite a while now. She is owned by some guys in Wales, and they haven't been to see her loads just because of the distance. But um, she's doing great. You guys saw her before jumping. She had a couple of quieter weeks, just hacking and not doing loads and loads, having some quiet days. And now we're getting back on, to, getting back on with it, and picking her back up and working her a bit more so yeah let's see how she's feeling today Go and do that again. So Quiz is just coming back into work. You might remember Quiz actually. She was here before. So she had her teeth done yesterday. So now we're back to doing a bit of long lining. As you can see, she is very talented. We backed her. Was it this year or last year? I would say last year. Yeah, I think she's five this year. I haven't checked though. She's got a big stride. Good girl. Nice. I got these little um, stirrup socks from Cool Horse Socks. They just, they, they go on like this, let me show you. And um, yeah, they protect your saddle from your prickly stirrups because stirrups are now having these grippy bits. I'll show you, hang on. Voila. And the best bit is, is because they're not like a cup. So we have got some that are like a little sock that sits on like that, but they're closed at the bottom. Because of this, if there's anything stuck on the stirrups, it can fall out the bottom. They don't get full of sandy business. They're really clever. We really like them. Thank you for the gift, Cool Horse Socks. I'd love to be able to take a video of this. And like tomorrow, when we're just hacking, my plan is just to, instead of taking them off, just slide them up. And then you go hacking. And then when you're done, you just pull them back down again. They're so easy to use. What a smart bit of kit. Love it. Love it. Very good. Right, I've got to go and teach. <laughs> I'm quite tired. It's not, Meg, it's not really that exciting. Meg's just said, do I want to see Todd's new trick? Ram. 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 Yeah. Woo! I mean, he does that kind of thing on his own, doesn't he? Yeah, but not around me. That's Ralph's best trick. Ball stealing. <laughs> Benny, show everyone your, your best trick. Benny, Benny, speak. Speak. Yeah, speak. Speak. Yeah, speak. Yeah. Um, the girls are all out in the field. Having a lovely time. Don't know if you can even see that. Can you see that? Happy little babes. Happy little horses. I love that they will go out together like that. I'd love really for Belle to go out with them, but as I said before, 
she kind of she kind of makes me not trust her because of the old kicking Zora thing. But this is the other bit. Oh, here we go. This is the other bit that I was talking about. Uh, this is the Expert Bits Comfy Barrel, but with uh, full cheek. So this is really good for the young ones. Some of the young ones have the egg butt still, but some of them really like that. Horses for courses and all that. But I really like those Expert Bits. If you, if you want to go and check them out, you can go and check them out. I'm not sponsored. just really like them. They're really good. I've made it to teaching. I ate a brownie. I ate a brownie and two packets of pom bears. Since when do they put three crisps in a pom bear packet? I mean, I know they're for like children, but seriously, too few crisps. Oh, we done a good job, didn't we? Don't Do you eat. want just, just a little snack? No. Where's my pocket gone? There it is. Hello. <laughs> this is what good ponies get. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Well done. You went on the bit and everything. <laughs> Well, I must be mad because I have now come back to the yard having just done that lesson because I want to clip my horses. <laughs> I want to finish Blondie's clip and I'm going to clip Zora. I think I can see the girls getting the mares in now. So, yeah, I must be mad. It's half past three. I've got time. I've got loads of other work that I need to be doing, online stuff. I'm having some change up with my online training platform and stuff and I'm trying to get some stuff onto my website a bit differently and... Yeah, so, um, yeah, just fancy clipping my horse. I gave Zora that bath, didn't I? So I don't want to waste the bath, basically. But anyway, here we are. I'm wearing a fleece. This is not a good idea. Hmm, maybe I need to find a different jumper out the back of my car because I have got a horse girl car and it is full of stuff. So, yeah, including feed, actually. They didn't have very many bags of fibre beet earlier. They only had one bag of fibre beet, so I had to buy the speedy beet I wanted, and then I got to go back for the fibre beet, which is a bit annoying. Anyway, let's go clip Zora. Actually, let's go finish clipping Blondie. Then let's clip Zora. Woo! It's you first, madam. So we're going to try and do... Oh, I'm in your face, maybe. Blondus, can you just help me out, please? Your beard, bit rest of your beard, and then... Just this bit. <laughs> Goodbye. Um, I did most of her back legs, other than the bottom of her socks, but I can do that easily. So it's just like from there down. Yeah, we do that. <laughs> Told me even a year ago when I clipped her that I would be able to Flip her whole legs like this. I just I've done the whole lot now. I've done my back. Oh, I've got one back sock left. The completed bald horse, ears and all. Hey, you look so beautiful. Back legs all done. Whoa. Have to get her in some better light for tomorrow, but good girl. Here we have horse number two. <laughs> Slightly bigger job today. She is very hairy. You're very hairy. Are you ready? Ready for a very fast haircut. And we're done. Are you beautiful? Have your head colour, please. Thank you. Look at the shine. Quite impressed with my clipping abilities. I've just given her a nice hot cloth. The water. You want to see the water? She had a bath today. It's mad. Uh, would you like me to introduce you to my clippers, which I love so much? These are the Liveryman Harmony Plus Narrow 10. They are 
life-changing. Listen, they're very quiet. Very quiet. They're quite heavy in a nice way. Um, they're good for all the fiddly bits. You can also do the whole body with them. I actually clipped Blondie with them completely yesterday because the power had been turned off here because um, they're doing some work, basically, on the power. And yeah, bonkers how good they are. I also have a pair of older Lister ones, bigger ones. I, to be honest, not my faves. I wouldn't be uh, touting them so heavily. They're very good, but they're not very heavy duty for like when you clip multiple horses. Anyway, right, I need to go and put all the clips away. Oh, a bit, I'm a bit buggered now, guys, I'll be honest. There's a lot of horses to ride today. A lot of clipping, but I'm glad I've done it because they both look very, very smart now. It's just Dee Dee left. He hasn't had a haircut yet. Who is very tired. She did 12 minutes of exercise today. That is a lot for a four-year-old. joking. But she didn't need to do any more than that because she was so good. Right, and put these clippers away. Give her a minute to fully dry off. And then I need to go home. Actually, I can't even go home because I need to go to the supermarket to buy dinner. I need to make dinner. The life of a horse person. But in all honesty, I wouldn't change it. I like love what I do. And I feel so lucky all the time to love what I do. It is a lot. And with like this stuff, like social media, it is quite like heavy going sometimes in that it's just constant. But um, yeah, it's cool. Definitely not moaning, just maybe acknowledging that it's kind of like hard work. <sighs> right. Are you ready to go home, kids? Yeah? Should we go home for dinner? Oh, yes. <laughs> Bentley's 10 this year. Can't believe he's so grown up. <laughs> I say. <laughs> Bentley, shush. Bentley, it's the end of the day. Absolute loons. But yeah, he's ten, apparently. Um, and yeah, I don't know why I'm telling you that, really. So we have one beautiful blonde clipped girl. We have two beautiful bay clipped girl. We have three absolutely feral hasn't had a haircut. Literally looks like I just dragged her out of a bog. But you're beautiful. You're still beautiful. You just haven't had, <laughs> just haven't had a haircut. Definitely needs a haircut. And then we have three, four. Number four. Beautiful. Beautiful clipped girl. Look at that face. Oh, Pecora, I love you so much. You're so precious. <laughs> It's raining. And I have a lot of hair in the back of my throat. I walk around Waitrose making really weird noises now. All right, let's do this. I swear people must have thought I had something wrong with me while I was walking around that supermarket. I was literally like, at one point I like did a little jig because I'm itchy. Because I got hair everywhere. It's not mine. It's dark now, isn't it? But you can't even see me. <laughs> what a day. Now I would like to say, I'm gonna take you home with me and I'm gonna make dinner and I'm gonna show you. But I'll be honest, I think you've probably seen enough of me in this video, haven't you? Sick of me by this point. So I think I'm gonna say over and out. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Please hit subscribe if you don't already. Tell your friends that I make YouTube videos and I'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye for now.